Hey everyone. So most of you know that I've got a pick and place machine and I'm sure all of you think that every board I make goes on the pick and place machine. Why not? Pick and place everything, right? Well, the truth is I still hand assemble most of my boards. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but let me explain why. So my pick and place machine only has 29 feeders and for my particular setup, most of the 8mm feeders are full of 0402 components to build my tiny picos, which I'm still building. Not obviously as many as I was when I was going through the full production for crowd supply, but I still have orders coming in every week and I have stock running low and I have to rebuild batches of 30 to 100 at a time. And I spent many, many months calibrating my pick and place machine to be able to run 0402 components on my tiny picos and get reliable panels every single time I run them. I'm very reluctant to mess that up. So every time I take a component off a particular feeder, swap it out with something else to build a different board, I then have to go back, put the original component back on and recalibrate that component on my board or risk getting panels that I have to hand fix every time I build them. So it comes down to weighing up time spent removing, reloading components on the feeders, recalibrating, fixing, and potentially having to hand fix and retweak things when I build my tiny picos to how long it takes me to just hand assemble a board from scratch anyway and not use a pink place machine. Now I'm pretty fast at building by hand. Uh, I've built thousands of boards by hand. The slowest part for me really is getting the components out to be put on the boards, not actually assembling them on the boards. And especially if they're small components, like uh, 0603 caps, you can't tell them apart. So I can't just go and dump a whole bunch of 10 nanofarad and 100 nanofarad and 1 microfarad all on the bench at once, because I won't be able to recognize what's what after I've done that. So having all my components sitting on the desk, being able to grab them one at a time, meter out how many I need, that's the slow part. Hand placing them, that's super quick. So what I'll often do for parts that I do have on my pick and place machine that has some crossover is I'll run hybrid boards. So for instance, my Tiny Pico Play Shield that I've been having lots of requests to make some more. I swore I wasn't going to make any more, but I might make some, maybe eight boards only. So I just need to run two panels. It doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do a complete setup on my pick and place machine to run two panels, right? But there are some components on here buttons and 10K resistors, 0603 resistors, that I do have on my pick and place machine that I can run and save myself a bunch of hand assembling those. So there are five buttons per board, so that's 20 per panel, and there are six 10K resistors per board, so that's 24 per panel that I don't have to do by hand. So it makes sense to just load up a profile and only place two components on my board and then hand assemble the rest. It doesn't make a lot of sense to load up one feeder for one LED, for instance, when there's only four on a panel and I have to only place eight of them by hand. Now, in this particular instance, I'm quite lucky that I do have a spare slot because I managed to reduce my part count on my tiny Pico builds by consolidating some of the resistor values together. So, feeder position 22 right now is empty, so I'm going to also include some 100 nanofarad caps, 0603 caps. So that's another component I won't have to hand place myself. And there are three of them per board, so that's 12 per panel. Now the fun part comes with putting a feeder extension on. I'm not actually adding a reel in right now, I'm just adding some loose tape because I just have a, a set of tape. It's got about 200 or 300 on there. It's just hanging around. So I'm going to add that in, get to see how that's done. Tie knot the very end if I can. Okay. Getting it through here without breaking any of the other tape feeders is a bit of a challenge. Okay. Make sure it's straight. And hook it on. Okay, so this is currently in feeder 22, but the build file for the board that I used originally, it was expecting it in feeder position 1, so I need to move where that is in the software. 
Okay, there is no capture software on my pick and place machine, so I'm just having to record the screen. It's not the best setup, but it'll have to do. So I go in and edit my shield play top file. And if I go to my feeders, it thinks right now that my 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad caps are in feeder 1. So I actually need to modify that until it, now it's in 22. And let's change the order and I save that. So it knows that my buttons are in feeder 26, my 0.1 microfarad caps are in 22, my 10k resistors are in 19, and I've also got uh, 10 microfarad caps, 0603, in feeder 18, because they're used on the tiny Pico as well. So if I go to my component list, these are all the components it's going to place. There's actually more 10k resistors than I remembered. There's quite a few of them, because there's also the pull-ups for the I2C, and some other pull-ups on the LIS IMU. If you look all the way here, there's quite a few components it's going to place. This one component here I'm not actually placing. Uh, this was a, a 0.1 microfarad cap, but it's actually now a 10 nanofarad cap that I'm using instead. So we save that, we can go back out, and then I load it, and put my vision up. So this is ready to run. It's going to do 19 components per board, and four boards. So that's almost 80 components I won't have to place by hand, which is fantastic. There's still quite a few that I will have to do by hand, but using this hybrid approach saves me a whole bunch of time. Let's go paste up some boards. Okay, the lights have to be off when I'm running the pick and place machine. If I have overhead lights over the top, it interferes with the up vision of the camera. Okay, let's just start by stepping through to make sure the first few are working okay. Okay, here we go. And there we go, almost 80 components placed for me. And here it is. As you can see, quite a few components have been placed for me. A stack of buttons, which are fiddly to do, lots of 10k resistors, and a whole bunch of caps. Definitely a time saver doing this hybrid approach. Do I wish I had a pick and place machine that had twice as many feeders so I didn't have to do this? Absolutely. But it's very hard to justify the cost on a new pick and place machine when I can do this hybrid approach. Now I only have to place about 9 components per board, so it's definitely a massive speed up. Okay, thank you for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe and click the alarm bell to be notified when I release new videos. If you're an existing sub, welcome back. It's great to have you here. Thanks heaps to all my patrons. You're amazing. And until next time, have fun making. Catch you all later. Bye.